grace to you and peace from God, your Father, from the Lord Jesus Christ, his Son, your King. Even as the Holy Spirit testifies through the gospel on this night, so that you might make room for him upon the throne of your heart anew. Amen. We hear in the first chapter of the book of Genesis about the creation of the heavens and the earth in six literal 24-hour days solely through the power of the word of God. We hear several times in the way that Genesis sings the song of God's creation, how he speaks, and it is so. Simply by the word that he speaks out, things happen. And it's good by the judgment of God himself. And then he completes all things in six days and then declares it all. After crowning his creation with you male and female, created in the image of God, our first parents, Adam and Eve, with their placement in this world. God now declares it to be very good. Perfection. And that's what Jesus has now come to do again. It's why the church year begins with the Gospel of Palm Sunday. And as depicted on our bulletin cover, as Jesus there atop the donkey that will carry him into the holy city of Jerusalem, he looks down upon the city, symbolically depicting how he looked down from heaven above upon this fallen world, no longer perfect with the disobedience of mankind in it, weeps in sorrow, but then begins his descent, coming as the king, but not like an earthly king. Indeed, he has come even upon a lowly donkey to signify to the crowd who is hailing him there and to us who sing our hosannas to him this night, that he is unlike any earthly king indeed. He doesn't come with pomp and circumstance. Rather, he comes as one who serves. That's what's different about his kingdom. That's even typified, too, in the gospel for this night with the provision of that donkey. There it is, ready to go in that one particular owner's field. Jesus, the Son of God, knows these things 
and says, when you go over there, you'll find a donkey and her coal. Loose them, bring them to me. And then this, all the more marvelous. And if anyone says anything to you, say to him, the Lord has need of them. And immediately he will send them. He's talking about the subject of the kingdom. He's talking about you. He's talking about you in whom this same word of God has taken the same effect. God speaks his word of forgiveness. I forgive you all your sins. For the sake of the Messiah, the Christ, who will one day come into the world to bear the world's sin, to be the Savior of all who believe. And it was so. For all who believe had that forgiveness. Perfection. Absolute perfection, because that is what the gospel is and brings to those who believe. See, this word that God has spoken into the world, the word about his love for those whom he has created, those whom he does not want to lose, those whom he wants to be a part of his kingdom forever, he continues to send this word to you. He did that for Adam and Eve, even after their disobedience. Even while they were hiding out from God, he called them out. Where are you? I've got good news for you. He speaks that word, and it is so, and that which is so, is so very good indeed. Because it's not just about the forgiveness of sins that brings perfection to the soul as it hears that word and believes it. But it also brings this new life. A life that would allow the Lord to borrow a donkey or a colt to be like the very king of this kingdom. To be not one who lords it over the subjects of the kingdom, but who comes as one who serves. As Jesus famously says, and as he even more remarkably demonstrates, here riding on this donkey into the city on the first day of that holy week, that would end on the seventh day of the week with his rest in his tomb. After he had accomplished all of his work on that Friday, the sixth day of the week, giving up his life that our sins might be put to death. And that joined to him in faith, we might also be raised to new life together with him on that following first day of the week, that glorious Easter Sunday, which has then led Christians to shift our day of worship from the seventh day to the first so that we might on every single first day of the week celebrate the resurrection of Jesus from the dead and our own. Because his word says so. The word that he attaches to the water of holy baptism says you are now bound to my life, my death, my burial, my resurrection. And it is so. And it is so very good. He says 
over bread and wine. This is my body, this is my blood, and it is so. And then he speaks to the subjects of his kingdom, inviting them, even you, to his table this night. Take and eat, take and drink for forgiveness, for the pledge of salvation, and it is so this night again, so that we might know our eternal destiny even before we come to that moment. And new life. You are now subjects of an everlasting kingdom. Given to you as a gift of grace by your King Jesus himself. It is so. Receive it. Believe it. For it is very good indeed. And so we live this life, even now, as his royal subjects. Living this life of his commandments, knowing that if he speaks his commandment, it is good. It is very good indeed. And so we, who have been forgiven of our shortcomings and failings of living up to this life of this commandment, have our slates washed clean in his blood, the waters of our holy baptism. He encourages us by the power of his word and his spirit working within that same word of power that makes it so, gives us such a life of love for God, for neighbor, for self. And it indeed is very good. It's the life that you will live even forever, through faith in him. Amen. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.